Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. I got a new PBQ for you guys. We're going to be working on this one. I haven't seen this one yet, so we're going to go through, do our best we can. I have my team make this, and I'm trying to do it blind. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, scenario network intrusion. Okay, so this is a network intrusion PBQ. Your security analyst at a large financial institution. The network monitoring system has detected unusual traffic patterns that indicate a possible intrusion. Part of the incident response team, you need to identify and mitigate the threat while ensuring the network remains secure. All right, our tasks are to identify and contain the intrusion, determine the source of the unusual traffic, isolate affected systems, prevent future spread, then eradicate and recover, remove the threat from the network, restore systems to their normal state, improve future defenses, implement measures to prevent similar intrusions in the future. Okay, so very good. These are the steps of incident response. Uh, so we're gonna identify and contain, eradicate, recover, improved future defenses. So based on the scenario, select the best actions to handle this network intrusion. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We're a financial institution. Our monitoring system has detected unusual traffic patterns that indicate intrusion. So I'm trying to pick out the key details, keywords for the question. As part of the incident response team, we're on the incident response team, we need to identify and mitigate the threat while ensuring the network remains secure. So we gotta select multiple here, I guess. Okay, so block the IP address of the source of the unusual traffic. I think that makes sense, that's sound. Conduct a full system scan on affected systems. I think that would be good to do. Disconnect all network connections immediately. I don't necessarily think that that would be the best course of action, that would disrupt our availability. So while that would be an effective security measure to protect confidentiality, it would do nothing. It would harm our availability. Update firewall rules to prevent similar traffic patterns. We could do that. That would be improve future defenses. Implement network segmentation to limit access. That would be, again, a future defense type of scenario. Uh, or step, reinstall operating systems on affected machines. I don't see how that's going to help us unless they were completely corrupted in some way. And review and update the incident response plan. Well, you always need to do that every time you have an incident. So I think these make sense. All right, let's keep going. All right, next scenario, data breach. You are a security analyst at a healthcare organization. A data breach has been reported and sensitive patient information has potentially been exposed. Your task is to manage the breach, protect the data, and prevent future incidents. All right, our tasks contain and assess the breach. Identify the extent of the breach, secure the affected data, notify and remediate, inform affected parties, implement remediation steps to secure data, and prevent future breaches. Okay, so similar steps here. Contain, remediate, and then forward thinking future processes. All right, based on the scenario, select the best actions to handle the data breach. So. We're an analyst at a healthcare organization. Data breach has been reported, maybe through like a help desk. Sensitive patient information has potentially been exposed. So we have sensitive information, probably protected health information or PHI that's been exposed. Our task is to manage, protect, and prevent. All right, so sensitive patient information is pretty important. Okay, immediately encrypt all patient data. We can't really do that as an immediate step. Now, our patient data should be in stored in some form of encryption. This isn't gonna help us with the data breach though. Um, and that might be, yeah, that's not really something that we do immediately. That's something that we would perform to prevent future breach or mitigate the impact of future breaches, how you would explain that. Notify affected patients and regulatory authorities. Now that is, a data breach has been reported and sensitive information has potentially been exposed. Now we would eventually want to do that. Uh, so, but it says potentially been exposed. So I'm not sure if this is gonna apply or not. Because we need to ver verify if the patient information has been exposed. So I'm gonna kick that off of, uh, I'm gonna check, uncheck that there. All right, conduct a thorough audit of access logs. I think that makes sense to determine the nature of the breach, change all system passwords, 
that might not be necessary. It says all. Usually when there's a, a term like all or never, it doesn't really, it's not usually the correct answer. So I don't think that would be correct here. Implement multi-factor authentication for all systems. That should definitely help us. It probably should be in place already. Conduct insurance, security awareness training for staff. That's certainly a thing that we can do to prevent future breaches. Hire an external cybersecurity firm to perform a security assessment. That's also something that we could do to, uh, to help future assessments. Let's see. Now, you know, it says right here, notify and remediate, inform affected uh, parties. So I think it doesn't say at any time what time we have to do this. It just says notify affected patients. So I definitely, now that I'm thinking about it, that should definitely be a check. Now I'm wondering if we, if all of these make sense. Access logs, I think makes sense. Security affected data. No, we should not. I, I think we should not immediately encrypt all patient data. We should do that in the future. And this is why you always want to double check because right here I, I mentioned, I didn't want to check that, but then I accidentally checked it, probably clicking around here. And that happens a lot of times on the exam. You might click something and then that's not the selection you intended to, to select. So it's always pays to double check. I'm pretty confident with what I've selected here though. Let's keep going. Okay, ransomware attack. We're a security analyst at a manufacturing company. The company's computer systems have been infected with ransomware and critical data is encrypted. This is pretty relevant to today's world. Uh, your task is to respond to the attack, recover the data, and improve security measures to prevent future incidents. All right, I like this. So we're gonna, we're gonna respond, recover the data, enhance security. Now we know that the way to recover from a ransomware attack is to restore from backups. And ransomware affects systems really quickly. It will start encrypting everything immediately and try and affect as many files as possible. So just with that immediate response, usually it takes a few seconds to corrupt an entire drive of data with most modern ransomware. All right, use backups for store data, decrypt data if possible. Usually very difficult with most ransomware. Decide on paying the ransomware. I never advise against paying the ran or I never advise paying the ransom. You never know if you're even going to get your data back. And if you do get your data decrypted, it might be corrupted in some way. You're also letting the hackers win. Implement measures to prevent future ransomware attacks. Okay. Disconnect infected systems from the network. I think this is a pretty solid strategy for ransomware. Especially if your ransomware is coupled with something like a worm or a self-propagating virus, isolating that system can be very helpful. I don't advise paying the ransom. This is usually a good solution to restore the data from the latest backup. Notify law enforcement authorities. It really is up to the organization. I make this a little larger, uh, but. In a lot of sense, in a lot of cases, there's federal agencies like CISA that are there to help you, especially if it's a manufacturing company, if it's industrial security or critical infrastructure type of attack, CISA and these federal agencies are there to assist. And sometimes federal agencies can work to get back the money if you do happen to pay the ransom, which I don't advise, or help you recover your data. So you could leverage resources outside your organization. Implement regular data backups, this is a really good way to help mitigate the effects of ransomware in the future. And some anti-ransomware software. I'm not too familiar with anti-ransom. I mean, there are actually anti-ransomware utilities that you can have. I, I know of a few that work to help identify the key precursors of a ransomware attack and stop all processes on a, on a system. So, there are, those are available. I wonder if my team's aware of them, so I'm gonna select that. Educate employees are recognizing phishing emails. That's always a good strategy. I mean, a lot of times the attack, uh, the delivery method is usually through type, some type of phishing email. So I think that works fine. All right, based on the scenario, select the best actions. Now it says best actions. 
Phishing emails, I could see this either way. It doesn't directly uh, address ransomware. It's still a good idea. I'm gonna unselect it because it doesn't directly pertain to ransomware. It's still a very good practice, but we're talking specifically about ransomware. So I wanna see how this one scored. All right, insider threat. Your security analyst at a technology firm. There are indications that an insider with legitimate access is leaking confidential information. Your task is investigate the insider threat, secure the information, and strengthen internal security policies. Investigate the threat, identify the suspected insider, monitor their activities to gather evidence, restrict access to sensitive data, terminate the insider's access if necessary. Strengthen security policies, implement measures to detect and prevent insider threats. So we're going to select the best actions to address these. All right, monitor the insider's network activity. That's a really good course of action. We don't want to immediately terminate the insider's access because we're trying to gather evidence. So that's not going to really help us in that regard. An audit, any type of audit is going to be helpful. So data access logs, I think that's fine. Role-based access control is good. That helps prevent privilege creep, where someone acquires more and more privileges as they continue working for an organization. Maybe they get promoted, they, keep, they retain the previous privileges they had, or they move departments and they retain all the access from the previous department. Strict password policies doesn't necessarily help us with insider attacks. It's still very helpful. You can make an argument either way with password policies. Now, password policies can help. Uh, usually, they help prevent against attacks where an attacker gathers your password hashes or breaches your network in some way. Um, I'm going to leave that unselected because it doesn't necessarily prevent insider threat. Insider threat is so where somebody already has access to your systems. Set up anonymous reporting systems for insider threat. I think that's good. Some people fear retaliation for reporting insiders or suspected insiders. Conduct regular security training sessions for employees. This is an excellent course of action. Okay. I'm feeling pretty confident, but I'm interested to see what my team is marking right and wrong here. Uh, I haven't seen this one, so let's see how this works. One of four questions answered correctly. Now, I think this might need some adjustment with the scoring, but let's see what happened here. Okay, so, okay, this one looks like we got everything correct. So that's really good. And I like the explanations here. This action helps to neatly stop the incoming malicious traffic. Scanning will help. Talk to you full scan, update and firewall rules, implement network segmentation, review and update incident response plan. Very good. Okay, data breach. Okay, so this one was marked incorrect and this one should have been correct. Change all system passwords. So let's see, change all system passwords needs to be correct there with a data breach. And actually, thinking back on it, in hindsight, I think that's a pretty good, that makes sense. Thinking about it, uh, if there was a data breach, it's usually a good idea not only to change, to give a notification for patients to change their data because the hackers could potentially have gathered a list of passwords, especially if we don't know the extent of the breach. And that is common practice. I think that makes a lot of sense. I could see, I could see this argued either way. The higher external security firm. Okay, this one, we got everything except educate employees on phishing emails, and I wasn't sure whether to check that or right or not, and I think it would help to help prevent ransomware, so I think that's that's a solid answer there. Uh, and I see how this was how this was scored. The reason why we have, and I'll adjust this before putting it on our, our quizzes, the reason why this wasn't scored is each of these should be scored as individual points. We got the first one entirely correct, and on each of these other ones, we missed one or maybe two. So the whole question was marked as incorrect. So we basically got one of four instead of 
however many there are here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's like 28 questions that we, we should be marked. So I'll correct that. Uh, but this is good. I want to get my first take on this question. I think this makes a lot of sense with the phishing emails though. And from what I'm seeing, these explanations look really good. Incorrect actions pay ransomware. Paying ransomware is not recommended and it doesn't guarantee data recovery. Very good, very good. Okay, insider threat. Enforce strict password policies. And I can see why that might be and strong password policies, you can argue that they will protect against insider threats. So I think that's a decent that's a decent answer too. It helps people help prevent people from guessing passwords from other people within the organization. If you have a strong password requiring up like 12 or more characters, uppercase, lowercase letters, you know, if you're allowing people to make their password password, that can be a problem. I think multi-factor authentication is more important but I could make an argument there for strict password policies. So good. Okay, these are very good uh, explanations. And I think this is a great PBQ. Now, if you're interested in learning, you know, your 701 material, passing your 701 exam on the first try without spending 405 bucks every time for a, a new exam attempt, you wanna knock it out and get it done, uh, go to cybercrafttraining.com, check the links in the description. We have courses for Security Plus, we have performance-based questions like this one that we've created specifically to help you learn the Security Plus concepts. Also, you get all the official CompTIA materials when you enroll with our course, official CompTIA Learn, official CompTIA Labs. Our Security Plus self-paced course is $398. And we also have our live class too if you're interested in an instructor to help you every step of the way. It comes with your exam voucher and our first time pass guarantee. We guarantee you pass in the first try with all of our boot camps, our live classes. If you don't, we're going to pay for a second voucher too. But I appreciate you guys joining me for this PBQ. I hope it was great. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you with your Security Plus studies. And thanks so much. Have a great day.